For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Ten months into the Russia-Ukraine war, one thing that is becoming clear is the shortage of ammunition on both sides and the problem that both sides will face to prolong the war. What implications it has for geopolitics and what are the lessons India can learn from this development is the subject of this week's Ask Nitin. I am Nitin Gokhale. So as the war drags on in Ukraine and Russia makes some gains and then withdraws and then Ukraine makes some gains, one unknown or little reported fact that is coming out now is the shortage of ammunition that Ukraine is facing because of low stocks that NATO countries and even the US has as far as artillery and tank ammunition is concerned. And it's a problem that is much bigger than just supplies. According to multiple reports in European media as well as uh, amongst uh, the American analysts, it is now becoming clear that uh, while Europe had scaled down production of uh, tank and artillery ammunition over the past uh, two decades or so, thinking that there will be no prolonged war and all the future wars will be fought on technology and uh, uh, through asymmetric or information war uh, will be the uh, norm of the day. The Americans uh, also had not stockpiled too much ammunition for uh, spares or uh, too much ammunition to spare to give it to uh, Ukrainians or any other allies. Now that is becoming very evident. According to one report uh, of the British think tank, the uh, RUSI, Royal United Services Institute for Defence, and uh, its security studies. During the fiercest fighting in Donbas, the Ukrainian armed forces fired as much artillery ammunition in one week as the British army has in its total stockpile. Now you can imagine that how the planning has gone awry in uh, some of these armies in Europe uh, and in uh, amongst the NATO, NATO members. The uh, Czechoslovakian uh, arms maker uh, one of the office bearers there has said that uh, 40,000 artillery shells were fired by Ukraine each month over the last 10 months. That means uh, the uh, amount of ammunition spent uh, was much more than even uh, all the NATO countries combined could really provide. Having supplied whatever stocks they had uh, to Ukraine, now the European and the American allies are scrambling to ramp up production. Now, there are several issues here. Uh, the industrial capacity in Europe has gone down. Uh, the assembly lines were either wound up or scaled down. Uh, there was no investment, fresh investment in trying to have this capacity for ammunition production. And now, the uh, private players, uh, ammunition uh, suppliers or manufacturers in Europe and US are unwilling to uh, manufacture until firm orders are given. Now, Firm orders would mean huge amounts of money to be given in advance. According to one estimate, uh, there's some Germany would uh, want to give something like 100 billion euros uh, for uh, ammunition supplies for replenishing whatever has been spent over the past 10 months or so. Whereas uh, the demand is for 100 billion uh, euros, they have just placed orders for 1.1 billion euros. That's the kind of gap between uh, demand and the funding that is available in Europe. And that is going to be a major problem for Ukraine going forward. What about Russia? Well, it also faces shortage, but Russia has uh, stockpiles that can last for at least another couple of years is one estimate of uh, one of the magazines in uh, US, one of the defense magazines. And that is because Russia also supplies ammunition to uh, other countries, including uh, to India. And therefore, uh, it has uh, stocks that will outlast whatever the NATO and the US allies can uh, provide to Ukraine. So, let me give you some figures. While the Europeans and the Americans have been uh, very supportive of the Ukrainian war effort, the uh, figures provided by some of the uh, defense watchers and defense analysts says that according to the US Army itself, 
the americans are currently producing only between 12 to 15000 shells artillery shells 155 mm artillery shells per month whereas uh, as i mentioned the ukrainians are expending more than 40000 shells a month uh, which means there is a huge gap between uh, what is being produced and what is being uh, expended by the ukrainians and therefore uh, there is a serious problem that they foresee all the analysts as well as the american uh, military leadership where western production capacities are not able to meet the uh, demands they are reaching their limits and uh, therefore uh, there is a doubt that uh, what will happen in case this conflict widens there is uh, of course uh, the perpetual funding versus uh, demand problem and uh, while uh, the nato nations have uh, reduced their capacities uh, they had also reduced their uh, funding for uh, artillery ammunition tank ammunition and uh, generally about ammunition uh, they were little reluctant to invest uh, more than uh, required and uh, the understanding in nato was that there will be no uh, old style uh, world war 2 type uh, uh, wars that will be fought on the european continent all those uh, assumptions have been uh, thrown out of the window Uh, precisely because uh, the russians are uh, fighting the old style war by bringing in uh, the tanks the artillery and trying to pound some of the civilian areas uh, through uh, the the kind of war uh, wars that were fought uh, in the olden days therefore uh, now the uh, challenge for uh, many of these countries is how to ramp up production now unless orders are given Uh, firm orders are given advance uh, funding is made to the private industry nobody is willing to uh, put uh, their own investments the private companies into product producing ammunition that is required by ukraine especially uh, against russia so what are the lessons for india in this while there was an assumption uh, last year after the azerbaijan armenia war that uh, uavs and uh, drones and armed drones will play a major part and there will be no uh, role for uh, tanks and armored personal carriers or artillery uh, guns for wars uh, in the future the entire assumption is now been turned on its head going by what has happened in russia and ukraine and uh, therefore india will have to now uh, draw some lessons from here that while technology has advanced while uh, uavs and uh, unarmed uh, platforms will be or autonomous platforms will be the way forward in some cases you cannot do away with your heavy weaponry heavy platforms like tanks especially given the fact that india is faced with two major adversaries who also have uh, major armor and uh, artillery uh, components in their uh, military doctrines as well as in their employment of tactics and uh, strategies against india so what will india have to do india will have to ramp up uh, ammunition production on its own while uh, the plan to source or outsource ammunition to uh, private players has been uh, in the works for the past 7 uh, years now the uh, production rate in the private sector hasn't improved precisely because the indian military has been reluctant to place too many orders on the private players the ofb as all of you know uh, the ordnance factory board has been split into seven different entities and some of them have now uh, become uh, verticals on their own producing ammunition producing uh, the required uh, missiles and rockets uh, for the indian military but uh, that rate of production is not keeping up with the demand that india needs and therefore the lesson here is that you not only have to give uh the ammunition uh, orders to private players as well as some of the uh, older players uh, from carved out of the ofb but also stockpile ammunition which can last uh, not just for 10 days for more than 10 days or maybe 20 or 25 days uh, given the fact that uh, the russia ukraine war has now shown the world that uh, the era of the old wars is not yet over it might happen any time or it might be a mixed kind of a uh, war between uh, uh, the different adversaries that india faces so therefore uh, this is something that uh, india is looking at this is also a huge opportunity for indian players indian ammunition manufacturers indian uh, ofb uh, carved 
uh, verticals uh, into the ammunition uh, uh, space as well as private players in India to export ammunition from India to European countries because European countries are not willing to uh, spend money or at least uh, invest money in private players and the cost of production in Europe is also going up because of the cost of wages uh, is going up in Europe because of the higher inflation that the uh, continent is facing. Even the US is facing higher inflation which is unprecedented in its history uh, since World War II. Therefore, the uh, fact here is that uh, this is both an opportunity as well as a warning for India that it must stockpile its ammunition uh, for future wars uh, which may last uh, more than uh, what has been estimated and also make sure that this opportunity to export ammunition from India is grabbed, is uh, utilized uh, for uh, ramping up uh, exports from India. That's the lesson that I think Indian military as well as the Indian industry must draw from what is happening in Russia. One small uh, anecdote or one small fact uh, that has uh, escaped many people's attention here and I was reading it uh, somewhere I thought bring, I'll bring it to your attention is that uh, while Ukraine had huge stockpiles of ammunition uh, post the Crimea annexation by Russia in 2014, uh, it was estimating, it was anticipating similar action by Russia against Ukraine for uh, these seven years. It had stockpiled a lot of ammunition to last for more than five or six months. Uh, but now it appears according to Forbes magazine that uh, the uh, Russian agents or Russian saboteurs actually blew up something like 210,000 tons of ammunition in various depots of Ukraine uh, in these past four or five years before the war started, which uh, was not noticed by many people, but now the fact is coming out, which means the Russians knew exactly where the, uh, the strength of the Ukrainians lay, that they had uh, the ammunition to last for a longer time, but they have gone and hit those depots and destroyed the ammunition that would have helped uh, Ukrainians fight the longer war. But because the ammunition stocks were depleted by through sabotage and through uh, various means of, uh, you know, sort of attacking these depots, I think the Ukrainians had to depend on the supplies from the US and other NATO allies. I, and now even those stocks are running out uh, and there is not enough production to make up uh, for the demand that the Ukrainians have against Russia. That's where the current war is and uh, according to what we now hear and see and uh, hear uh, President Putin saying that this war will uh, get prolonged, there is no end to uh, this war uh, very soon, uh, this is going to be a problem for Ukraine which I think is also a wake-up call for the NATO as well as uh, the US that you cannot draw down your industries, you cannot sort of uh, uh, lose the appetite for war as Europe has done. And uh, therefore, another lesson for India here, which I am sure Indian national security managers are uh, actually looking at very seriously and then taking remedial measures. I thought I will flag this for you because uh, while uh, attention is on the overall result or overall the you know, direction of the Russia-Ukraine war, these small uh, portions of uh, or small uh, matters in the war are uh, not really looked at. And since uh, I sort of got a hint from uh, some of the articles that have come up and uh, some of the people who are involved in manufacturing of ammunition in India and in Europe, uh, I thought I'll flag this for you. I don't have any uh, queries from anyone uh, in this program because this was uh, not given enough notice about and uh, therefore I'm not going to take any questions here. But uh, as we wind down uh, to end of 2022, there will be one more program that I will be doing on Ask Nitin uh, uh, before we uh, sort of sign off uh, for uh, this year in uh, 2022. Uh, I wanted to say this that uh, maybe there will be a different format of uh, this program going forward in 2023. But we will uh, announce and we will uh, let you know what exactly that form will be uh, or that program will take and uh, how we will go about it. But for the time being, uh, do keep watching Strat News Global, you know where to reach us, uh, your feedback and your comments are extremely important. Uh, so I will wait for that and uh, let us know if we can do some more programs, more information that you require. Uh, for the time being, it's goodbye.